morning, 9 o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. I'd like to begin by acknowledging we're the Treaty 1 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. I'll introduce the members of the panel. To my far left is Mr. Jeff Petch. To my immediate left is Ms. Carrie Linklater. My name is Stu McPherson. I'll be chairing the hearing today, representing the City of Winnipeg Assessment Taxation Department. It's Mr. Merrick Froelich. And the recording secretary is Ms. Ellen Rovo. We'll be hearing applications for the revision of the assessment role in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act. The matters for which revision is requested is to described in each application. We'll limit discussion to those matters. The statements that applicants or the assessor make at this hearing are sworn testimony. Anyone speaking to the matters must be sworn in. Please be advised comparisons of assessments of properties are not considered evidence of market value by the Board of Revision. The Board is the Board of Revision is appointed annually by Council. It's independent of it and the City Administration. It makes its decisions on the basis of the evidence provided at this hearing and issues a written order that will be mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note the Board's decisions with respect to an application may be appealed to the Manitoba Municipal Board if the matter pertains to assessed value or classification or to the Court of Queen's Bench if the matter pertains to the application of exemptions from taxation. Should you wish to appeal, information on how to do so will be included with the board's order. With respect to the hearing process, I'll confirm the matters to be addressed with each applicant following the swearing in. We'll then have the assessor's testimony followed by questions the applicant may have, and then the applicant's testimony followed by questions. Each side will have an opportunity to summarize if they so wish. And once all the evidence about an application has been brought forward, the applicant may leave, and the process will repeat for each item on the document. The session will close after all the applications have been heard and the board will deliberate in private and make its decisions. We receive the order by registered mail as soon as possible. Just as information, all public hearings are recorded and will be part of the public record. I'll have these sort of parties in, please. If you do have a cell phone, please put that on silent. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Becker. You're here representing the tenants for nine premises. That's the amount of assessed value or the annual rental value only that we're dealing with? Correct. Thank you. deal with the properties as they're listed on the docket. Uh, Mr. Assessor, we'll begin with item number 4, 170 Salto Crescent. Are you ready, please? The file number is 195196. Uh, business, business ID number is 28692. We have a uh, ARV value of 775080. Using overall ARV per square foot at $8.52. The subject bid is 28682. We have two areas. One of the areas is 83272. The other area is 7,649. The breakdown between the, the two areas is the one rents at 653, the other one's at $4.80. We come up with the value of 775080. What we've done here for our comparables is we've shown some that are all in the northwest quadrant of the city of Winnipeg, so we have a comparable in Redwood. We have it at uh, $6.53. We've got a comparable at Hutchings at $6.75. We have a comparable, another, we've got two other ones on Hutchings as well. One was vacated, one was full at $6.12 and $7. And we got the last one at $1,400 Saskatchewan. It was a five year lease for 100,000 square feet at, at $4.99. Based on this information, we'd like the assessed value to be confirmed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Butcher, questions for the assessor? Uh, just a couple. Um, access to this subject property is through another property, correct? Uh, yes, because uh, 
I don't know how to hear it, but it, that is correct. Okay. The comparison on Don Redwood, that's Boeing Canada, right? Yep. That one? And that was completely, there used to be uh, GM parts for yep. the warehouse, and then it was completely renovated, and it's 100% air conditioned? That's correct. Okay. And that's your most current rent? Yeah. That is our most current rent, yes. I, that's all the questions I have. Mr. Pesh, I have none. Thank you. Ms. Linkletter. I have none. Thank you. Uh, my assumption is that the 7649 is not air conditioned. That's just a storage area. You know what? I would have to double check. I feel like it's listed as mess space. Sorry? It's as mezzanine space, a second floor space. It's mezzanine? Yeah. So it's, it, I haven't been to the property, but what I'm guessing is that it's a part of the second floor space. That's a part of the production facility. And it doesn't require air conditioning? No. Thank you, Mr. Becker. I'm here from you, please. Okay, um, I could ask the board to turn to uh, page four. Uh, I guess the reason I asked about the access to the uh, goal, if you can see on the site map here, at 170 Soto actually has no access off of Soto. There's two other parcels that are in front of the subject property, but they do have an agreement with the people to be able to use a laneway and whether that agreement would carry forward if somebody else bought the building or if that other business, I don't know. Uh, so that was one of our, our contentions. And then on page seven, uh, these are the rents that we used for the realty assessment uh, appeal. Uh, where we had used on the main floor, 83,272 square feet at 550 as opposed to the 653 used for the by the assessment department, and then we had the mezzanine area at four dollars, which is just slightly lower than the four eighty used for the annual rental value. So we came up with an overall rental value of five dollars and thirty seven cents. On page eight is our workup um, based on our overall rent of five thirty seven. We come up with four hundred eighty eight thousand five ninety two. Uh, there's heat, light, and water to ninety thousand nine hundred twenty one square feet. And then the only the office portion of 8,160 square feet is air conditioned. Um, so our rounded annual rent value was 683,160. And that's my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Fullock. Questions? So would there be anything to prevent the new owner from uh, getting access to uh, this property from Wind Road? That I don't know. <coughs> But on page, but on page five of your brief, it seems to be that, that there could be very easily they could put a driveway into there to have access. I don't know if anything's ever easy, especially when you have to get permits and permission from the city. But it is <coughs> there are no other physical infringements upon to put a driveway into there or a roadway to gain access to the that, property. That I don't know. If you look at the two properties on the top, the top program on page five, none of them have actual access off of that road, so I'm not sure. But, but there's another road on the western portion of that, so access wouldn't be an issue there, would it be? I uh, guess the property is addressed and legal on Soto, and they have to go through somebody else. Okay, and so who owns the building at, uh, at 150 Soto? Is it the same owners as the owners of 170 Salto? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. They are the same owners. Uh, in your comparables, uh, do you have any comparables that are close to the subject property built in 1999? Because uh, I think the closest one <coughs> is almost 20 years away. Well, we have the one on Fultz in 1990. Okay. And we have Ormond's Creek in 1992. And those are in the what the one at Owens Creek is what six fifty seven. Uh, six fifty seven. Yes. Yeah, is that a lot closer to the subject property rent than what you're proposing here at five thirty seven? The that one I do know that one. That one does have good access and is part of a multi industrial area. Okay. 
No other questions. Thank you. Mr. Kirsch? I have no questions. Thank you. Ms. Lindley. Um, so, Mr. Becker, basically for this 90,000 square foot building, there's only air conditioning on the office portion the office. of the stadium, mm -hmm. which is 8,000? Yes, that's the uh, approximately. Eight, yeah, approximately 8,160 square feet. Okay. Um, may I redirect it? Mr. Crowick, I yeah. just have a question on um, 1400 Saskatchewan Avenue under yeah. your red comparables. Yeah. Um, that's got a reported space of 100,000. Is that all air conditioned? Oh, none of that would be. None of it is? Because it's a storage warehouse space. Okay. Uh, do you know what takes place at this uh, address? You know, I think because it was old, it might be the old Lucerne mm. building. Uh, that one's on Empress. Empress? Lucerne? Yeah. Okay. Well, what, is it is the 1400 Saskatchewan? But no. Uh, I can't remember now. Just oh, give me one sec here, please. I'm sorry. 1400 Saskatchewan is Body Pro Parts. Okay. Built in 1976. So 25 years older than the subject property, which is a significantly lower rent. Okay. Thank you. That's all my questions. So, Mr. Becker, you're saying there's only 8,000 square feet that's air conditioned? Yes. Has, it, has that ever been brought to the assessment department's attention? No, we're actually using the same amount. We only have 8,160 square feet for air conditioned space. Yeah, it's never been in contention. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Oh, 8,160. Okay. Yep. And there seemed to be some sort of concern about the about the access. It, is there? There's nothing on title. There's no easement. Uh, okay, the notes I have here: access and egress is over adjacent road. No direct access. 100 exit. Uh, 100 social. Not the same company, but some commonality in of ownership. That's all I have. So, as to 150, I don't know who the owner is. That's. I'm sorry. That's all I. Okay, so you, you, you can't say whether there's anything on title or not? No, I can't. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to make the assumption that uh, that uh, summations aren't going to be required in these. Uh, however, if you do want to make a summation, please let me know. If you do that on an individual basis. Thank you. Next, we'll do it at uh, 660 Berry Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we get that for the brief or I'll get that in there, I guess? Uh, it's on the side. Oh, okay, sorry. Thank you. I didn't know. Uh, file number is 195557. Uh, business ID number is 43233. Total air view values two million five seven six nine forty. Using the overall rent per square foot of five dollars and twenty eight cents. Uh, we have uh, six sixty Berry. We have a base ARV of three dollars and sixteen cents. The heat portion of it is for the entire area. Same thing with electrical and water. The air condition aspect of it is only nineteen thousand four hundred forty one square feet. Coming up with total occupancy cost of one million thirty-five seven sixteen, and a rounded ARV value is two million five seventy-six nine forty. Using similar comparables um, for this property that I had discussed before, uh, this property was confirmed uh, at the twenty twenty realty value, and so uh, I just brought these comparables here. The comparables that I that I do show here, they are a bit higher than the subject property. Uh, but uh, I'm comfortable with the rent that we've used because I have other comparables that are of similar square footages that are within that range of $2.16. That concludes my formal presentation. Thank you. Mr. Becker, uh, Just a couple. So, as you mentioned, none of these are actually comparable to the subject, right? 
Yeah, so what I, what I had done is that uh, I had already created this brief ahead of time, and I have some other comparables here that we've used that are in the, the larger, larger size variety. You know, there's not too many leasable areas that are 487,000 square feet. They're usually owner occupied. But, you know, we do have rents like we have its only place at 422. We have other ones that are like, you know, just around the $100,000 mark. And they're ranging from four dollars and twenty-two cents to six dollars and fifty-three cents. Are they four hundred and eighty? Like I like I said, you know, but they're but also the rent that we're using is three dollars and sixteen cents. So we've done a downward adjustment for that because they're not rents that are in the range of, uh, you know, that are a couple dollars higher. Okay, the majority of this building was built in nineteen forty, correct? Uh, Correct, I don't have access to me here, we're just discussing rents. Okay, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Mr. Pesh. I have none, thank you. Ms. Lindberg. I have no questions, thank you. I have no questions, thank you. Mr. Pesh. Okay, if I could ask the board to send to page four. Uh, this, I'll just give a brief description of the second property. This is the Bristol Royal Space on Barry. Uh, you can see the table we have there in the middle of the page. Um, other than the two additions in 1989 and 1964, the balance of the building was built in 1940. Uh, there's a large mezzanine area of over 48,000 square feet, and the wall heights range from 10 feet high to 25 foot high. Um, City out in the, for the realty had an effective age of 1952 for this property. Uh, it does have a small landed building of only 1.91 to 1. Page 5, there's uh, photos or site plans of the subject property. And on page 7, this is our market rent. So these are the market rents that we had uh, used for when we did the realty assessment appeal. And if I could actually turn to page eight. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put this brief together, but on page, I'm not sure, do you have the pencil changes on here? On your no. brief? No. Okay, well then I'm not gonna go through that. <laughs> uh, we ended up using what we thought, based on the age of the subject property and the size, we used to rent to 275 per square foot. And our comparisons range from anywhere from Two dollars a square foot for a 1963 building on Barry. Uh, that's 148,000 square feet to a high five and a quarter for a 1970 building on Inkster. That was 134,000 square feet. So based on the size of the building and that 95 percent of the property was built in 1940, uh, we're using 275 a square foot. Uh, the air conditioned area is 19,441 square feet. So we've used 487,728 square feet at 275. We've added heat, light, and water to the total 487,728 square feet. And we've added air conditioning to 19,441 square feet for a rounded annual rental value of 2,376,960. And that's what we're asking the board to reduce the annual rental value. And I'm open for questions. Thank you. Mr. Froehler. Questions for the applicant? How many, on your comparables, how many leases are at two seventy uh, two dollars and seventy five cents or lower? Uh, one on Barry. Okay. Yet you're using two dollars and seventy five cents as a as a rent for this property. Does that seem supportive? Like does your document does your evidence support a two dollar and seventy five rent or a rent that's much higher than two dollars and seventy five cents? Well, I don't think it'd be much higher. No, because if you look at the comparables, the largest one is three hundred and forty six thousand. And it rented for three forty-five, uh, and it's uh, built in nineteen eighty. That's forty years newer than the subject property. So, are are you implying that this building has an effective age of nineteen forty? No, I, I mentioned it has an effective age of nineteen fifty-one. That's okay. the city's using anything. Okay, but um, the condition in, of the building wouldn't it be much more newer and modern than nineteen fifty-one? Based on the work that's being done here, uh, we didn't put the 
effective age on. This is the effective age that's being used by the assessment department. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm saying a, in a site-specific evaluation, would the, would the building give you a feeling of 1951? Uh, you know what, the last time I went through this building was probably 15 years ago. Okay. And it's a lot of it is still the original building. Like okay. Maybe they've changed some of the heating and lighting, but um, it's old. It's the old Bristol Aerospace. Okay. No other questions. Thank you, Mr. Pesch. I have no questions. Thank you. Yes, look, look. Uh, my understanding, the realty was confirmed on this property. Uh, as far as I know, yes. And has it been appealed to the municipal board? For as far as I know, yes. Yeah. You know, I didn't check that. Yeah, it, it has been. Thank you. On to 1855 Alice. <coughs> Are you ready, Mr. Sutter? Yeah. Phone number is 195558. This room number is 43266. Uh, we have a total ARV value of 1525000 we have a total area of 138.544, and we have an overall square, uh, square foot rate of $11.01. $11 we have an area uh, 1855 Ellis. We have a base ARV of 856. Occupancy, occupancy costs consist of uh, the heat, electrical, water, and air conditioning. They're all being fully utilized. Total occupancy cost is 339433. And I have an ARV value of $1,525,380. I use the same comparables for this one as I did with the other ones just because of the square footages in the areas. Uh, so we're just showing you a range here of you know 95,000 square feet to 228,000 square feet at 856. And uh, this property was confirmed at the Municipal Board at that Board of Revision in 2020. And I'm asking for the value to be confirmed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Becker? Uh, just a couple. Uh, okay, your best comparison then would be 1345 Redwood? Mm, yes, it would be. Okay, totally renovated, 100% air conditioned. It has a 2016 lease at 653. Yeah. And you're at 856. That's two dollars higher. This is similar <laughs> to the question you just asked me on the previous one. Yeah. What would I, justify I, that? Because I, I believe in what ends up happening with this with this building here and not doing the real thing for it. It's a much newer building. And if you look at your pictures on your brief here and outside of it, it does seem to be a newer building. Oh, it is. It's 2012. Yeah. And I don't know what the and, and so And so that's why our rent's so much higher than that, right? Like, there's not a lot of new buildings out there that are 138,000 square feet. Because, and without doing an inspection of this building, it's hard for me to, to comment. But it, it is a brand new building here. And it was confirmed and with the pictures that were presented at the, at the realty appeal for this property. Obviously, the the panel at the time felt it was is a fair value. Okay. I'm just curious because I'm just going back to the last question. So yeah, it, yeah, and, and, and in fairness, but, but but the difference between this one and the, that one is quite obvious. So the, the one that we just looked at on Barry, that's a 1940 building, and it built in 1940. We have an effective age of 1951. 52, actually, 52. Like, yeah. You know, it's significantly different than this brand new structure here. Which is why the rents are almost doubled. No, well, no, I wasn't trying to compare rents. I was just trying to compare the question. That's all I have to ask. Okay. Mr. Petsch. Um, I do have a question. Uh, again, just related to the rent uh, comparables. Yeah. Uh, is, do you have any other comparables you're able to introduce? Because of the uniqueness of the building, and, and in fairness, I should have uh, printed off the brief and kept it here. It's uh, 
It's an outlier. There's not a, there's not a lot of new buildings that are built in, in the in you know past 2000. But this is built in 2012. That is of this sort of quality and finish. Like this is a state of the art building here. So we do have a much higher rent than other basic storage rents of similar size. If you're looking at a Sobeys or if you're looking at a trucking warehouse, the the nature of the manu the, the process here is a lot different. So subsequently, we have a much higher rent here. Okay, thanks. Another question. Ms. Leslie. Uh, yes, sorry, I just wanted to be uh, clear. The age of this building is 2012? I think it was built in 2012. Is that correct, Mr. Becker? Yes. The building was constructed in 2012 with a plan area of 137,095. Okay, um, and your comparables. So, Redwood apparently has been renovated. Yes. What is the age of that building? Do you know? Oh. That's been there since the, the railroad building has been there since the 1970s or 80s. Okay, I know thank because you. I went to shops in Sisler and I remember walking by it. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty fair. Uh, just give me one sec, I can probably find it. It's, it's no, it says 1990. Yeah, it's on the line. It's effective age, age 1990, yeah. but the actual building there is a lot older than 1990. Um, oh, sorry, uh, 1750 Inkster Boulevard. Um, has that been renovated at all, to your as to, to the best of your knowledge? I'm thinking not. Looking at the effective age of 1970. No. Thank you. That's all my questions. I I, I guess more a comment than than a question. Uh, the assessment department might be well served to be putting the age of the subject properties on the brief somewhere. Yeah. Because there's not an age coming to into play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh Okay, I can start on page four, I guess, with just a brief description. Uh, the property was constructed in 2012. Plan area of 137,095 square feet with a small mezzanine area of 1,469 square feet. Uh, it's owner occupied. It's owner by Magellan, which is also Bristol. And at the board of revision hearing, uh, these are the notes from the assessor that I mean from the agent in our office that took it in. They mistakenly accepted a rent of 775 per square foot but they didn't know that the actual model rent was 856. I have no idea why. But, so we accepted 775, and then I think we fought other issues on it, I think the bottom of the couples, et cetera. And as far as I know, the value was confirmed, and then we took it farther to the municipal board. But it's not at the municipal board, though. It's not? Yeah, I checked it this morning. No, well, so that's what, I, that's what I found out about this one. Okay. But anyway, we're basically, I guess our main thing is the building is more similar to Redwood. It's 100% uh, it's done for manufacturing for the aerospace industry. It's 100% uh, air conditioned. But we've got we feel better comparables than what the assessment department is using. And if I could ask the board to turn well, page five, is just some overheads of the subject property. And page seven is where we have our rent comparables. Uh, none of them are as new as the subject, um, and their sizes are a bit different. They're all less, uh, only one on uh, number eight is on Biggin, is uh, similar in size to the subject property. That one has a rent of $7.91, and that was a step up in November of 15. It's 136,000 square foot with 27 foot height. Uh, I have actual photos of this comparables. I'd like to turn to page 10. Uh, the first comparable on uh, 760 Pandora is the picture at the top, and then there's a site plan of that, that property. Comparable number two is uh, 190 Oldman's Creek that was built in 1997. It's about, it's less than half of the subject size of the subject property. There's photos of that one. And then number three, this is on Notre Dame. Uh, well, it says St. James, but it's the where the old the Bass Brewery used to be. It's part on uh, Notre Dame and part on St. James. And comparison number four 
is uh, in the same complex. Those were, one was built, the first portion was 1999, and the next one, 2003, and they have rents of six dollars and five ninety-five. Next one, comparable number five, is on Hutchings. That's a 1994 building, considerably smaller. Uh, page 15 is comparable number six, which is 58. Hutchings, which is 1990, it's considerably smaller. That's about a 2014 lease for 675. Number 16, comparable number seven. This is on Dallas. This is very close. This is up uh, Dallas and Barry. And this subject, that property has 81,000 square feet. It has built in 75 to 2,000. It has a rent of seven dollars. Page 17. Uh, that's comparable number eight. That's the one that's built 2003, similar size, step up rent of 791. And then comparable number eight is, oh sorry, I must have mixed up. That's the one on Megan. And that one's 2003. And then the last one, comparable number nine, that's on debate. So those are all in the St. Boniface Industrial Park. Uh, so based on those, we have an average of 646 and a median of 616. But based on uh, the above and considering the site specific, specific attributes of the subject property, we're considering a rent of 775. This is taking into size and age of the property. So on page nine, we show our workup. We've got 138,544 square feet at 775. We add for heat, hydro, water, and air for the entire building, and we come up with a rounded annual rental value of one million four hundred and thirteen thousand one hundred twenty. And that is the value that we're requesting from this board, and I'm open for questions. Thank you. Mr. Froelich, questions for the officer? Just one question with regards to land to building ratio for the subject property. Uh, why would they build such a big building if land to building ratio is such a significant issue? I, I don't know. I guess if there's you look a on page two, uh, there's a forward that they have a very small area that they need, I guess, for for shipping purposes. Yeah. So for their purpose, it's owner occupied. Uh, it was good enough. Yeah, but if you're looking at the bottom of page, page five, there seems to be a significant amount of access for trucks and for vehicles on the property. So to me, uh, the lack to building ratio doesn't seem to be that big of a deal because if it was, they would have uh, made a smaller building. Would you not agree? You know what? It's, it's not part of my argument, so I'm not, okay. I've never looked into it at all. Okay. No other questions? Thank you, Mr. Pesh. I'm looking at your uh, rent comparables yes. on page 7. Correct. In particular, uh, number eight, which is 200 Bayon Avenue. Yes. Which seems to be very close in, in size. Correct. Um, I note that the property at Bayon is uh, effective age of 2003, subject property 2012. You used a, a rent of 775. Uh, this is at 791. Yes. Um, can you please comment on the Bayon property? Uh, uh, and, and how it might be different in other ways than the subject property? Uh, I, from, okay, I don't know everything about the property, but I think it was a built to suit. If you look at the original lease, it was from 2005 to 2023. Yeah. So it was almost a 20 year lease with the step ups. And usually, when they're like that, it's usually a built to suit. But other than that, I don't have any. We just felt that the 775 for the subject property. It's not part of an industrial uh, uh, plant like the St. Bonas Industrial Park. It's uh, on Dallas. And the land to building may be fine for the owner, but it may not be if somebody else wanted to develop this as another use. Uh, so that's why we felt 775 was fair. Okay. Thanks. No other questions. Thank you. Ms. LeCouder. I have no questions. Thank you. Just kind of following up there, uh, the location does come into to play for desirability of rental, does it not? Yes. Um, the reason this one's here, I think, mainly is because it's just down the street from their main plant, that the one we just had earlier, uh, 660 Barry. They're the same ownership. Okay. 
What about the proximity to the airport? Is that is that important? None of these have real uh, air air sight. You know, it, it could be, but the aerospace changes so much. I'm not exactly sure. Like when I first did the, my inspection of 660 Barry, they were working on a helicopter, and that was the last time they were ever going to work on one because these places are mainly used now just for parts and uh, manufacturing of parts. So I think it could have been anywhere if it's being in the development and distribution. So, to me, it's a, if if it wasn't owner occupied, I'm not sure if they would have built in this location other than in a industrial park that had better access. Okay, because uh, as was mentioned, probably the best comparable is in St. Boniface Industrial Park. Yes, because it's got two gold there. I mean, that's a lot better access than. And that's your body. To me, it would be a better location than the subject property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll move on to 200 Holmans Creek Boulevard. This is based on a total area of 33545 using an overall rent of $8.73. Uh, for the subject property, we have uh, we use a base rent of $6.06, using uh, heat at $0.60, cents, electrical at $1.26, water at $0.25. Cents. The air conditioning aspect of it is only 7,600 square feet. The total occupancy cost of 73364 After looking at the 2020 realty decision, we are going to match the ARV value and make that a recommendation to reduce the value to 276660. And that concludes my formal presentation. I also have some comparables on the back. Mr. Becker, we agree. Mr. Pesh, no questions. Mr. Lindberg, no questions. Yeah. Mr. Becker, nothing further to add there. Seventy 
Pandora. Oh, Pandora. 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 Business ID numbers 43397. We had a total ARB of 18780, utilizing 21,992 square feet, with an overall ARB rent of $8.20. Uh, for the subject property, we we're and based on the 2020 realty decision, we're reducing the rent to $4.53 using uh, 16,030 square feet for heat, 21,993 for the electrical, 16,030 for water, and air conditioning 1,800 square feet for total occupancy costs of 41,949, which comes up with a value of 141,600. And uh, we, this was based on a couple factors. We could reduce the rent, and we also reduced the square footage. I have some comparables on the back, and that concludes my formal presentation. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Uh, Mr. Pesch, I have a question. Just like what? Um, one. Yeah. So you reduced the rent in the square footage based yeah. on what? Well, the inspection of the building is in the realty appeal for this property, we had some of the areas for the occupancy costs that were higher, that were closer to the 21993 where there was just outdoor storage aspects of this building. And so because there's outdoor storage work, there's no need, there was no water, and there was no heat in it. So when we do reduce those areas from the 21993 to the 16,030, that impacted the ARB value. Thank you. The actual subject lease, did uh, anyone attempt to net that out to see what the effect of rent was? Uh, based on... No, because what happened is that the information on that from the mayor was very confusing. And it's sometimes hard to make, make sense out of uh, confusing income and expense matters. Like they did provide information, but none of it really actually made sense. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any further guidance, Mr. Becker? Uh, Seventy-one Marion Street. Seven Eleven. We just done that. Seven Eleven Marion. Seven Eleven is the next one. Seven Eleven. Yes. Number is 195480. Business ID number is 2973. So we have the total ARV value of 105720, uh, utilizing 19,224 square feet. Uh, we're asking for the value to be confirmed because of, we've already started the paperwork to uh, vacate this property using effective date of January 1st, 2019. So the paperwork's in process to get completed because we're being vacated for both 2019 and 2020. So because the paperwork's being processed, we're asking it for it to be confirmed here at this time. Mr. Becker? So in fairness to Doug. Yeah, we have it that it was vacated in February of 18. Zero. But if the paperwork is in place to remove the ARB, then it'll be a matter of us challenging the effect of being on the Yeah, but it's all one year plus one always, right? Yeah. So I don't have a, an argument. Uh, but we're requesting zero. So 
since they have moved. Zero. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fuller, just for clarification, you said the paperwork is already in yeah, the process. Yeah, so what, what, what to, happened to vacate this? So, exactly. I did it on Thursday. So what happened is on Thursday I did the inspection of the property. I confirmed with, uh, just give me one second, well, there's a couple of factors that take place here. But I actually spoke with Darren Robinson, and he actually confirmed with me that uh, they had vacated it, you know, in 2018. And so uh, I just, so with that information giving, giving to, uh, given to us, so we always go the current year plus one. So our effective year for change would have been January 1st, 2019. We can't go beyond that. You know, if Altus would have told us that they had vacated sooner, then we would have vacated them sooner. But that's our position. And so I had spoken this with my supervisor. She said, because the paperwork's being placed, we're asking you for it to be confirmed. But I'm under oath. I visualized that I did the inspection on the Thursday. It will be a zero assessment to moving forward. So this property wasn't appealed last year then? It was it was not appealed in 2018 for BA. 2019? 2019, no. Okay. Because I would have wrote down what the cuts would have taken place. Because uh, EMF nutrition is under <coughs> master fees right now. And they had like four different bids and they were just paying the bills without informing us. So that's why we didn't have any information. And there's actually a sales listing for this property right now that I was able to find. So I went there. There's no economic activity there. It was confirmed in my contact. And this is a single tenant building? Yeah. It was uh, Ian, I think Eastman Feeds Animal Nutrition, another under Master Feeds. Incorporated on Spears Road. Any further from Mr. Fesh or Ms. Lindwitter on this? Um, just like to make one comment. No. Um, when you read the file number, that was accurate. Yep. And of the assessment information here, it notes 711 Marion. The yep. subject property is described here, 771 Marion. You know, you know what happened here is because we've already deleted the, the we've already deleted the, the business ID number. I, I made a manual copy of this. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I just did this so I could have something okay, nice here to ensure that, yeah, that it, for yeah. the record. Oh yeah, there's not an issue there. Yeah, because once you delete. Okay. A business ID number, then you can't produce a report. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I have no uh, questions for you. Good catch. Ms. Yeah. <laughs> Linkler. Uh, no, not in regards to this. Thank you. Can I ask the follow up? Which, which roll number are we on right now? See, 2973. Okay. So it's the second number 11, the second last one, Doug. Second last week. Okay, at 771, we haven't heard yet? No, 771, we have heard. Okay. Yeah. So I think we missed Pandora. Pandora. Mm -hmm. You missed Pandora? No, we've done Pandora. We haven't done yeah. Mary. We didn't do 771. Yeah, Mary. we went from Pandora to, to 711. To 711. Yeah, that's why I was asking. That's why I was starting that. You said we'd heard that. We'd heard it, but it was No, because, <laughs> well, it wasn't 77 Marion reduced from 180 to 780, from 180, 780 to 141, 600. We haven't done that one yet. But we didn't hear it. I thought we had. Oh, no. no. We didn't hear it. Okay. Monday morning. <laughs> Monday morning, and it's uh, <laughs> spring ahead. <laughs> Side here, so that seems just so bizarre. You switched the What's your uh, <laughs> so well. amount? For which one? Uh, for Pandora. 
So for Pandora, my value went from 405, 840 to 382, 380. Yeah, yep. what was yes. your square foot value? The square foot value initially. Like your rent? No. Was 290. 290 was the pure recommendation. Yep. Yeah. This is, this is the one I asked you if you had netted out the gross. Okay. See, I thought, so how did I, I guess it's it, okay. We'll, we'll get back on track. Yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we need a five minute break at this point? No. No. Okay. We just finished 7 11, all right? We're just finishing 7 11, yes. All right. I actually have a brief for that one. I didn't realize it. For what, 7-11? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Which is item number 10. So that's number 11 we're on then, right? Number 11, right. Those, those two are switched, is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I asked is that if we were just the very last page, and we've highlighted an email here from uh, Scott Miller at Master Feeds where he said, quick reminder that 715 Marion is mothballed. It has not been in production since April 2017. No one has occupied the location from February 18. I'm not sure if this is relevant, but potentially useful info platform. We feel it's relevant and we feel that the 2020 business assessment should be zero. Mr. Froelich, questions for the applicant? No questions. Mr. Fresh? I have no questions. Ms. Lickler? No questions. Seven seventy one Marion. There was a recommendation from one eighty seven eighty to one forty one six hundred. And this is this is one where there was rent and square footage. That is correct. Discrepancies. Vector, you're in agreement with the revised value? Yes, we are. That's not a concern, Mr. Fesh. So nothing further on that one, Mr. Vector? I don't. So we'll bring us to the last property we're dealing with you, Mr. Vector, which is Seven Higgins. When you're ready, Mr. Sussman? Yes, Sam. Call number is 1951.98. Rule number is 20966. We had a total ARB value of 263.100, utilizing a square foot area of 35,697, and an overall rent of $7.37. Uh, for the subject property, we have two areas, or two, two separate buildings here. Uh, they're actually on two different rule numbers, but they're combined for one for PA purposes. We have one premise area of 32,025, having a base area of uh, 75,259 at $2.35. Before I go any further, just to give you a description of this property, uh, they're a fire bill, so they take grain, and then make flour. So Mr. Bolchum and I did an inspection on this property on Thursday afternoon, very extensive. We had the full uh, safety presentation with regards to quality concerns, 
he had obviously steel toe boots, boots. How the, we had to make sure we had no pens on us because there be no metal on here. And uh, because this building is so unique, it's valued from a realty perspective on the cost approach. But because we are a business, we assign a business rent to it. And so as we were going through the building, going through the process, Mr. Berkshire and I spent Friday after, Friday morning and partial of the afternoon just going through the areas just to ensure, just to ensure it made sense. So we had, you know, there are a lot of unheated spaces in this building here. So subsequently, this is why the reduction is so significant. So for the heat in this building, because of the, the milling process, they actually have uh, some that goes up and some that goes down in, in terms of milling the property. Um, so we have a heated area of 17,107 square feet. Electrical for the entire building at 2025. Water for 17,107 square feet. And the air conditioning for 1,040. For total occupancy costs of 55,246. And that aspect is 13,500. For their other area, which is like a separate sort of storage, storage of 3,672. Uh, we just have electrical at 3,672 3, 3, square feet for total occupancy costs of 46,627 for 17,460 to come up with the 147,960. And that's the value that I'm recommending today after my inspection. Thank you. Mr. Becker? We agree with that. Mr. No questions, Mr. Okay, and nothing further than Mr. Victor. Desire for summation on all the properties. Okay, thank you very much for your participation today. Thank you. Back to the top of the dock. Thank you. 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 Sure. So we'll deal with 177 forms. File number is 19 5049. Business uh, ID number is 52279. We have initial ARV value of 58,500. Total area is 9,984 square feet. The overall rent is $5.86. Uh, for expenses, we have the areas listed here for, uh, for heat and electricity at $9,984. And only for water and air conditioning, of essentially nothing because of the uniqueness of the building. So when we use the base rent of $350 plus the air, uh, plus the occupancy cost of $18,571. Come up with an ARV value of 53,520 for this property, uh, and that concludes my formal presentation. You can see see the correspondence here on the back that I've just given the business owner the information with regards to the appeal in our process here, just to show anything falsely in the process. He has it on file what I've been presenting. Thank you. Questions, Mr. Pesci? I have no questions. Mr. Linklater. Um, just one in regards to your statement that um, your reduction is based on uniqueness. Yeah. What is it that's making it unique? 
It's sort of like an outdoor storage area, which is sort of like a greenhouse. It's like in 170 Forbes is uh, south of the perimeter. Right. And so the building is very unique. I didn't have it on appeal, but this is what I've learned. File number is 19 5011. Business ID number is 1375. We have a total ARV of 329,580 using 40,576 square feet and an overall ARV of $8.12. For the premise area, we have uh, we're using uh, five dollars and thirty cents as a rent for the area of heat electricity of similar to the subject property of forty thousand five seventy five. We have essentially no air conditioning for this building, and we have a value of three hundred thousand six sixty. We are matching the twenty twenty realty decision on this. because oh, I have it here. It's Mr. Frazier. I sent him an email. I didn't put it in my brief, but I have it here. There was a response from Mr. Frazier. Yeah, he said, received thanks. Metal Pack accepts the new value of 300,660. I have this number here. Other questions? Thank you. Ms. Lindblad? No questions. Thank you. Just a little clarification. There's two premise IDs. Why is that? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I think what happened is maybe at one point there was two different businesses in here and we didn't get rid of that bit. So there's there's one business here right now. That would be my guess. The area premise. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's heat and electrical and water in all areas. Uh, for the air conditioning aspects of it, uh, you know, one area is completely air conditioned, and the other one's only 2,500 square feet of air conditioning. So the breakdown is 133,320, and that will be my recommendation to reduce the value of this property to 132,320. I didn't include the communication here, but I, I went to uh, see Carlos's property on Thursday, and I sent him an email after I did my workup, and he is happy with the value of 133,320. Thank you. Mr. Pritch? I have none, thank you. Ms. Lickler? No questions. Fire. So that will the properties we have to deal with. Thank you very much for your presentation today. The orders will come up into a course, and I will call the hearing to order.